Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and in this video, I'm continuing along the um, lines of aerosols in the atmosphere and how they affect the amount of solar radiation that reaches the surface, and about basically the direct effects from aerosols and the indir indirect effects with how they affect clouds and how clouds respond to the uh, amount of, of the pollution, amount of the anthropogenic aerosols in the atmosphere. So basically talking about the you know pollution and aerosols, it, they act as cloud condensation nuclei and water vapor rising condenses onto these droplets, these cloud condensation nuclei, um, and then they can react, they can grow um, and eventually get large enough to be rain, to, to, to create a rain at the top of the cloud, which then falls through the clouds and coalesces and, and collects more water, uh, removing the water from the cloud. So the cloud, the number of cloud condensation nuclei, the change in cloud condensation nuclei, and of course there's a huge change with the shuttering of industry globally. There's a huge reduction of the number of aerosols in the atmosphere, so when there is a change of cloud condensation nuclei, it changes the cloud fraction in the sky, the fraction of the entire sky that's covered by clouds. It changes the liquid water pathway because water will tend to stay in the clouds for longer periods of time because it's in smaller droplets which are less, less likely to get large enough so that gravity overcomes their suspension in the cloud and they start falling down where they'll, they'll, they'll collide with other water droplets getting larger, uh, producing drizzle and then rain, which then eventually will, will uh, get rid of the cloud. And I'll discuss that in a bit more. And of course, the cloud uh, radiative effect is very important for, for uh, the climate and for warming at the surface. So we have good satellite measurements of the uh, vertical velocity in the convection, so the warm air rises, you know, it's over the ocean, it's high in water vapor, the water vapor condenses, so that rising speed, the mean speed of rising, W sub B, is important and can be measured by satellites. Also the cloud geometrical thickness, so the, the, the thickness of the cloud from the base of the cloud to the top of the cloud and uh, the thermodynamic structure of the lower atmosphere. So often, you know, we talk about a marine boundary layer, um, which, hap which is a region of, you know, it's a, of, of where the clouds are in this boundary layer, it's close to the surface. Um, and above the warm, moist air, you can get even hotter dry air, which acts as a, a cap and it puts an upper limit on the, the boundary layer. So we're talking about cumulus clouds and um, uh, the, um, the, the uh, stratospheric uh, convective clouds. Um, and most of the uh, cases, in most of the cases, the geometric, uh, the cloud geometric thickness, the CGT parameter, is less than about 800 meters. So that's about the, the upper thickness of the clouds that were looked at in this study. Most of the cloud droplets uh, are formed at the base of the cloud where the uh, water vapor, as it's rising, as you get, as it's in the rising air, the air is cooling and it reaches saturation or supersaturation and then starts to, uh, if because there's cloud condensation nuclei, the water vapor starts to condense out of the air into these, creating these cloud droplets and N sub D is a number of these cloud droplets that are forming. The cloud drop mass grows linearly with the height above the cloud base. So as the convection continues and rises up, you know, the, 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 the particles, the water droplets gain uh, mass. So they gain water. So there's nearly a linear increase in the liquid water content of the cloud with height above the base of the cloud. So the thicker the cloud, of course, the more water it can hold. Um, and um, 
the cloud drop coalescence rate, if you like, the rate at which the droplets can combine, creating larger droplets, um, is proportional to the liquid water constant squared times r sub e to the fifth power. r sub e is the, is the cloud drop effective radius. Now, when this, so this radius incre it increases as you go up because the droplets are getting bigger, the droplet mass increases. Um, not the number of droplets, but the, the, because that's determined by the cloud condensation nuclei at the base of the cloud. So as this, as the effective radius, when it gets above about 14 micron, the, the droplets have enough weight that they can start falling downwards and you get a drizzle forming and the clouds start to precipitate. Um, this drizzle then leads to accretion. Okay, droplets can collide with droplets further below them, and it forms raindrops in the full column of the cloud. Okay, so now the cloud geometric thickness that is required for reaching this 14 micron drop size, it depends on the, um, it depends, uh, you know, on the, on the uh, ND, the number, number of droplets. Overcast decks of multi-stratospheric clouds, uh, multi-stratospheric, strat, mar, sorry, marine stratospheric cumulus cl uh, clouds, they usually break up when they begin to precipitate. So, you know, precipitation is about two millimeters per day. That's sufficient that the rain creates these downdrafts in the system and when it reaches the surface of the ocean, you get these miniature gust fronts, if you like, at the sea surface. And these gusts, so the cloud, the water's descending, creates a wind, hits the ocean, kind of spreads out on the ocean. You know, so other rain dropping in other regions close by does the same thing. And these gust fronts can collide and, and then they have nowhere to go but up again. So it triggers convective cloud formations. Uh, when they collide with each other. So the cloud fraction then will quickly drop from about one, uh, you know, if you have, you know, completely socked out clouds, marine uh, stratospheric uh, stratocumulus clouds, the MSCs. Um, so you'll get, you'll go down from about 100% coverage, cloud coverage to about 60% coverage or something, you know, as the precipitation happens. The raindrops also scavenge the cloud condensation nuclei, they're trapped in, in the particle in, in the in the raindrops and they're brought down into the ocean. So the number of cloud droplets can go from about 55 per cubic centimeter to about 15 per cubic centimeter. And instead of getting clouds socking you in, in a completely closed cell, you get these open cells. So um, now it's very, very difficult to measure the cloud condensation nuclei levels. So, you know, in the past they've used something called aerosol optical depth from satellite measurements and aerosol index, AI, they're proxies for CCNs. But the problem is, is um, you can't, you can't uh, determine these things when it's cloudy, which is exactly when you need to determine them. So this is a problem. So instead of that, um, it's, uh, you know, the detection limits are, are poor for these these um, aerosol optical depth limits. Typical numbers for aerosol optical depths are 0 0.06 over the ocean. That means about 100 to 200 cloud condensation nuclei per cubic centimeters. Um, but the, uh, that's close to what the medium value is. So you're very at the detection limit. It's not a good measurement. So you can use the number of droplets in the cloud, which you can measure from the satellite and the updraft the W sub B uh, at the cloud base to determine the, um, from these factors, you can get a good estimate on cloud condensation nuclei. Now, the marine stratospheric clouds, they form by radiation cooling of the cloud top marine boundary layer. Okay, that kind of, most, the moist marine boundary layer is capped by a pronounced inversion with dry 
air above, warm, dry air above, and that puts an upper limit on the, you know, that makes the air very, very stable, um, the lower tropospheric air. So this allows for a strong radiative cooling of the cloud tops because they stop abruptly because of the, from the dryness of the air. The dryness, the dry air above is, is, is there because of subsidence in, in anticyclonic um, systems, so high pressure systems. So we can talk about something called LTS or low, lower tropospheric stability. And that's basically the temperature um, at the sea surface, the the basically the temperature of the air at the ocean surface, which is similar to sea surface temperature, um, minus the temperature of the air at about three kilometers altitude or 700 hexapascal pressure. So that's known as the lower tropospheric stability. And um, for every one Kelvin increase in that uh, temperature difference, um, there is a 6% increase in the cloud fraction. Okay, um, so basically, you know, you have these cloud condensation nuclei, you know, that are formed, uh, lots of them are there from anthropogenic uh, pollution, uh, aerosols. Because of the updraft from convective lifting, you can measure the velocity at the base of the cloud going up. You can get the number of, you can also measure the number of cloud droplets there. So those, those two things have a dependence on the um, cloud condensation nuclei number. And so from the satellite data, the MODIS data over the Southern Ocean, you know, zero degrees to 40 degrees south latitude, roughly in a grid uh, with grids of about a degree uh, like at about a degree latitude by uh, a degree longitude, 110 kilometers by 110 kilometers near the equator. You can, um, you can measure these things and you can look at the, you know, how the cloud stability um, depends on these. Okay, <coughs> so I realize this is very technical, um, but, you know, I'm trying to go through it myself to get a better understanding of how the um, reduction, the significant huge reduction of aerosols in the atmosphere is affecting the climate. So I'm having to go through the physics and the details of this. And in the next video, um, I'm going to show you the actual uh, papers and show you some diagrams and so on, um, some illustrations to try to explain um, what I've been saying in this video and in the previous video to hopefully. Um, so if I've lost you completely, don't be concerned. The next video should try to, uh, you know, clear up some of the um, things that I've been saying, you know, with with uh, plots and and diagrams. So. So thank you for listening, and uh, I'll, I'll uh, switch rooms, and I'll go to my computer, and I'll film, uh, you know, another video um, on on the, the these papers. So this is very crucial because, <coughs> like I said, you know, most climate models and simulations of you know how much warming there will be under different conditions as we move forward, um, they they um, need to parameterize the effects of the aerosols on, on clouds and, and, and the effects of clouds on the radiative balance at the surface. And they have to account for the direct effects, the aerosol particles blocking sunlight, so cooling the earth, the aerosols affecting the um, particles, the, the droplet sizes in the clouds, more aerosols, more cloud condensation nuclei, smaller droplets, brighter clouds, less light reaching the surface, also less rainfall from the clouds. Uh, clouds can be thicker, clouds can, 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 can contain much more water, have much longer durations, um, and there, so therefore cool the earth for longer periods of time. Um, and then the heating effect, you know, when it's hotter, the clouds can actually evaporate without producing rainfall. So all of these factors come into play. So thank you for listening and uh, stay tuned for my next uh, video. Thank you.